Okay, today's lesson is going to be on profanity and cursing. Is it okay? Is it legal for Israel to curse? Uh, there's words in the Bible that are used to, um, that some Israel will say is okay to curse based off of these particular verses and different things. So we're going to go through what the scriptures have to say about cursing and using profanity. Uh, let's start with James 1 and 26. If any, if any among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So it's saying that if you, if you think you are religious and you don't have control of your mouth, then you're deceiving your own self. And you, your religion is vain. So you're not supposed, you got to be careful what you say out of your mouth. You just can't say anything you want to. You just can't degrade people, uh, uh, call women bees and stuff like that, and use verses to, to to try to give you authority to say it. You know, verses like a woman is counted as a dog, and then say, "What's a female dog? A bee?" And just keep saying it to make the, the somebody on the street mad or a woman on the street mad, so you can get views on your YouTube page and different things like that. You, and we're not supposed to do that. Unless it's for the building up of Israel, it's not you're not supposed to do it. Let's go to Colossians 4 and 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. So make sure your speech is of grace. Seasonings taste good. So it's using salt. Season with salt, meaning that it's, 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 it's to make it taste good. You don't want to sit there just degrading people all the time and just saying curse words out of your mouth and saying you're Israel. A lot of people, the reason that a lot of people don't join Israel or won't take part in Israel is because of so much cursing and so much negativity, uh, profanity being used that you get people of higher stature that don't want to be around that. Everybody is not from the street. Some people were raised in homes where there was no cursing. People were raised in homes that uh, some of them are doctors, lawyers, engineers. They don't talk like that on the job. People may talk like that on, 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 on certain jobs, but certain places, they don't talk like that. Even in the Christian church, they don't talk like that. They say, God bless you and praise the Lord and all that. They may be all, but they know not to curse and use profanity in the Lord's house or what they call the Lord's house. They may go home, they may curse at home, they may cuss out their husband and wife, but when they're in church, they don't do that. They know how to act. And a lot of people in Israel, because of a, a lot of times we come from broken homes, different places, we people curse and it's just normal. Within Israel, we bring that out. And so that's why a lot of people of stature won't become part of Israel. I remember when my wife, uh, when we first... I would watch videos and my wife was like, I can't watch this. It's too much cursing. I said, well, just ignore the cursing and hear what the scriptures are, are what they're saying. She's like, I, I just can't do it. But she wasn't raised in a family that every cur curse every two seconds. You have a lot of times you have people who, you know, families try to keep their kids away from certain environments. When I was coming up, my mom didn't let me over certain people's house or people that she considered low class. She wouldn't let me go over there. If she found out that that family was a certain way, she wouldn't let me over there. If she found that family, they curse, they call women bees, they do all that kind of stuff, my mom was no way she gonna let me be in that environment because she wanted the best for me. You want me to go out, get an education, make money, be able to take care of my family? And she know that that environment is a lot of times gonna cause Issues, you're gonna be in jail. So she wouldn't let me be around that environment. And Israel, a lot of times, because of where we come from, we bring that into Israel. Christ didn't speak like that. The disciples didn't speak like that. I never see anywhere in the Bible where Christ was saying, Hey, you be or whatever. He, he never said that. We're supposed to be as Christ is. But we're quick to just bring that street stuff into Israel. That's the reason that a lot of Israel won't keep the law completely. The scriptures may say, 
you're not supposed to wear something on your head when you when you when you pray and prophesy. But they'll wear something on their head. Why? Because that's they like to wear the bandanas, this like when they were in the street. You're not in the street, man. You're in Israel. The Apostle Paul said that you're not supposed to wear anything on your head. But you got Israel that will do it and come up with every excuse, oh, this is not a law, blah, blah, blah. Because they just don't they 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 want to keep the uh they want to keep the uh, what they were taught on the street. They wore hats backwards. They wore the hat on their head. You know, they had their their uh, uh, Nike hat turned sideways. They want to keep that in Israel. So they try to come up with excuses to be able to keep that in, in Israel. Oh, hey, that's not the uh, that's not a law. Blah blah blah. It's very evident what the scriptures say. The woman is to cover her head, and the man is to have his head uncovered when you're praying or prophesying. When the word is coming out, your head is supposed to be uncovered. But you got wicked Israelites that just won't, they want to do what they want to do. Let's go to Ephesians 5 verse 4. Neither filthiness nor foolish talk nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You're not supposed to have filthiness or foolish talking. None of those things are supposed to be happening. Romans 3 and their throat is an open septic. He's saying that their throat is an open septic. With their tongues, they have used deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. A lot of times you hear the people that curse a lot, they have a bitter heart. That's why they curse. Because it's out, of the, out of the heart are the issues of life. So what you put in your heart, which is your mind, is what you get coming out of your mouth. So if you got a bitter mind, a bitter heart, you, that's what people who curse. Even people in the world who are not Israelites know better than the curse. A lot of them, I'm, a, I'm about peace and da-da-da-da. They don't sit there cursing every few seconds. You're an Israelite. You're supposed to be above them. It's no different than women. You have women who are not even Israelites that know how to carry themselves around their husband, how to cook, clean, so do all those things. And then you got Israelite women that don't even know how to do it. And you got the book that teach you exactly what to do. They don't even have a book and they do it better than a lot of Israelite women. That's not an excuse. You have a cheat sheet. You got the book that tell you all the answers and you still, there's people that do it better than a lot of Israelites. The Christian church, they don't curse all in the Christian. They do it better than Israelites. Just, just plain, they may not be keeping the law, but they know not to curse and, and, and talk all that in, when they're in church. They may go home and talk foolishness when they're in church, it's all praise the Lord. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. God is good all the time. Blah, blah, blah. blah. They, they, yeah, they know what to say when they're in church. They know I they don't hear them saying no curse words and all that kind of stuff. Profanity and stuff like that. Let's go to Colossians 3 verse 8. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Calling women bees and all that kind of stuff is filthy communication. Hey, I slept with that bee last night. Da, da, da. All that's filthy communication. Ah, oh, but the scriptures say uh, that uh, 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 whatever wicked woman is counted as a dog. What's a dog? What's a female dog? A bee. A bee. Ah, oh, you, you go. You get carried away with. It. The scriptures say that just, that's to uplift. See, there's a difference in uh, uplifting and tearing down. The words in the Bible are not. To tear down, it's to lift up people. When people are doing those things, calling women bees and and and, and f you and all that kind of stuff, that is not to build somebody up. So why are you saying that's evil communication? Ephesians four verse twenty nine. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. You want to minister grace unto the hearers. You. The, anytime you speak, it should be for edification, to build someone up. Cursing is not to build someone up. Profanity is not to build someone up. It's to tear them down. You ain't worth SH. That's to tear someone down. It's not to build them up. So don't pretend like saying that there's nothing wrong with saying. It. It's not building. It's for anything you say is supposed to be for the edification. And saying you ain't S and you ain't never been and you ain't gonna never be SH. That is not for building someone up. That's to tear them down. So it's not for edifying. Exodus 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. 
for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, guiltless that take of his name in vain. Yeah, we have to be careful how we use the Lord, uh, the, the name of the Lord or the Lord's name in vain. You know, a lot of times we're good for saying, uh, you know, uh, trying to think of some of the terms we use. Like, or we'll say stuff like that's a D-A-M-N lie. Okay, we'll say use terms like that. Um, Ephesians 5, verse 4 to 5. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no homonger, nor unclean person, nor a covetous man, who is an idolater, have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. A lot of times we, uh, as Israel, bypass certain things in the scriptures because we are, we are in that sin. Meaning, a lot of men won't talk a lot about hormone because they'll talk about homosexuality and they'll jump on people in the street about homosexuality, but they don't jump on them about hormoning, hormoning because we're all men. And you know, it's cool that you got a couple women, but they say you won't make it into the kingdom. But we don't want to focus in on that because we'll be pointing the finger at ourselves. So we point, we'll see, we'll see that uh, that no whoremongering, unclean person, covetous, idolater, have, or if they say effeminate, we'll say effeminate. See, effeminate. Somebody that's that that even if you act like you're you're a, a, a homosexual, you won't uh, make it into the kingdom. See, and we'll just bypass the one that said whoremonger, because hey, that's me. Uh, I don't want to person my own self, so I ain't gonna, I'm gonna just bypass that one. You know, I'm gonna just talk about the one that. I like, which I ain't. I'm not a, uh, uh, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a uh, homo, you know. So I, it's okay for me to, uh, me, me to talk about that, you know what I mean? So that we got to stay away from that. We got to say all that the scriptures say. James 5, verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but ye, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest ye fall in condemnation. The scripture is saying when you answer someone, you answer with yea or yes or no. Don't swear. A lot of times you have, I swear to G-O-D on my baby life and all this other stuff. It says, don't do that. How can you swear when God owns everything? You can't swear on God. You don't have the power to swear on God. It says, but above all things, my brethren, swear not neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. You're not to swear by any oath. Because who are you to make that come true? Only God can make it come true. James 3 verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceed a blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. So out of the same mouth, God bless you. And in the same in the same mouth, I hope that person died. He said, that would not be. It should only be one. And that's why you have to bridle your tongue. Because out of the same mouth, we see the blessing and cursing. People say all kind of things. Oh, you know, I... I Bless him and bless that and da 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 da. And then the next thing you know, they curse, they cursing you out and telling you that that, that you wish that I hope you die. You can't. We can't do that. Matthew five verse thirty seven. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whosoever is more than these cometh of evil. A lot of people like to give more than a yea and a nay. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Hey. Uh, are you in sin? No, but, uh, uh, well, it depends on how you, what you mean by sin. No, let your yay be yay. Are you in sin? Yes or no? Well, see, it depends on how you look at it. See, that's normally evil coming after it. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. You ask the question, yay or yay, did you commit adultery? Well, uh, well they weren't together right then when, 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 when we did it. He wasn't 
he wasn't, his wife was away and they weren't really in good communication. That ain't what I asked you. That's your yay be yay and your nay be nay. People come up with excuse because they don't want to answer the question. And it causes sin. James 3 verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil or full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God, out of the same mouth or seed of blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. So it's telling you that our, our, our tongue is poisonous when you can't bridle and you don't know how to hold your tongue and know when to speak and when not to speak. We just whatever we want to. We don't have no control of it. And as you get into scriptures, you got to start learning to control your tongue. We'll bless and God, thank you, Lord, and God is good all the time. And then we'll see a, a brother out there and we'll curse the brother, not knowing that that brother is made out of likeness of God. You can't be cursing that was made out of likeness of God and then say, God, I love you and you're great and all that. That's, that's, that doesn't make sense. If you're blessing God and saying God is good, you should be doing the same uplifting to your brother. That's in, in the flesh. Psalms 39 verse 1. I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I, I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Because sometimes you won't have wicked people that are before you. And he's saying that I'm going to bridle my tongue even in the midst of wicked people. You might have family members that are wicked and they draw it out of you where you just want to cuss them up. You got to bridle your tongue. Because a lot of times they can push because they know what buttons to push. But they, your family, they're your mother, your brothers, your sister. They know what, what to push. Hey, remember when you did this and you did that and da, da, da. now you're acting all holy and everything. But I remember when you got in trouble for selling drugs and da, 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 da. And they know what buttons to push. Now you miss the holy and then you want to, you, 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 you forget all about the Bible and bridling your tongue. Next thing you know, you're cussing them out. You got to control your mouth. You got to bridle your tongue. Even though you want to say something, you got to learn to just not say it and bridle it. Because the only thing going to come out is evil. And they're going to have something else that you can see. I knew it. I know he didn't change. I knew he was the same person. That's what they're going to say. Yeah, he got this religion and he got this new thing. He da 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 da. But he ain't changed. All that cussing. All that profanity he uses. He ain't changed. That's what they're going to say. They, they, they push you so that you will do that so they have something to use against you. You got to learn to of your tongue and don't don't go back and forth. Proverbs 13 verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Because when you open your mouth and you say the wrong things, that could kill you. And if you say the wrong things, it could cause destruction on you. Why do you think even when nations dealing with other nations, they have to have a whole uh, thing in how to communicate with them? With that other nation. They have certain norms that they do in other nations that they don't do here in America. So they have to have a whole meeting with the president. Hey, when you meet them, make sure you bow this way. Make sure you shake with the with the right hand because it's offensive to shake with the left. Because in Saudi Arabia or in this country, they 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 wipe their butt with their left hand. And that's a sign of dis disrespect. And that can mess up all negotiations. You see what I'm saying? So you have to know all those those things. So you got to make sure when you're speaking out of your mouth, you're speaking the right things or that could cause a war. You just can't open your mouth and say whatever you whatever you want to say. Matthew 15, verse 11. Not that which goeth into the mouth that defiles a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. <laughs> That's why the scriptures say out of the abundance of the heart are the issues of life. What's in your heart, your mind is what you have in life. All you speak every day is, I'm broke, I'll never have anything, I'm never going to be anything, and then you look at this in life and you're, you have nothing. But that's what you've been speaking. You have to remember that everything that was created was speak, created through the spoken word. Everything that the Most High created 
He created through speaking. That's the power. If you go in Genesis, it said, and he said, and he said, and he saw what he said. That's the power is through your tongue. That's why I say you got to be blessings and curses come out the same mouth. You can bless somebody out of your mouth. That's why you got the problem. Because once you release, you release a power when you open your mouth. Keep it inside unless it's something good. Because now you're releasing power. Yeah, people say, I love my child to death. And then your child died. Well, you spoke it. You put out those words. You say, I love my, my child to life. You don't say, I love my child to death. But you don't know that. If you don't know that, you're saying it all your life. And all of a sudden, your, car, your child gets in the car accident. And you're like, my God, why you did it? He didn't do it. You did it. You said, I love him to death. Don't blame him. You spoke it. You have to be careful what you say out of your mouth because you can, you can bring out, push, push out curses or blessings. That's why you have to brighten your mouth and know when to speak and when not to speak and when to keep your mouth shut. Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give account thereof at the day of judgment. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So every idle word you say when you're just saying things or whatever, it's, it's being recorded. Right now, when I'm speaking right now, it's being recorded. And at judgment, when you die and you're standing before the Most High, you're going to be judged based off the words you said out of your mouth. Um, peace. So you got to be careful what you say out of your mouth. Sometimes peace can't be, and you have to things have to happen. But I'm saying... When you can pursue peace, try to pursue peace. You know what I mean? Um, Jeremiah 23, verse 10. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing the land mourner, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. It says because of swearing the land mourner. You have to be care about, careful about swearing all the time, especially on your kids and all the stuff that sound cool. I do it on my kids. <laughs> you know, it sound cool, but you, you don't know what you're doing. You know what I mean? Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, that they shall give account thereof at the day of judgment. We said that. Matthew 15, verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth to follow a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this to follow a man. So a lot of verses are pretty much saying the exact same thing. Luke 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil, or of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So out of the, your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, your mind, your mouth speaketh, and it speaks good words or it's going to speak bad words, and that's depending on on your on your mouth. Okay, Matthew five, verse thirty-three through thirty-seven. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not swear, th swear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is the God's throne. See, you can't swear by God because it's his throne. How can you swear by something you don't own? You swearing by God and it's his, his throne. He the man. Not you. How are you going to swear by my house when you don't own my house? you making an oath by something you can't pay. Nor by the earth. You don't own the earth. For it is his footstool. The earth is God's footstool. How are you going to swear by the earth when it doesn't belong to you? Neither by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head. You can't even swear by your own head. I swear on my life. You can't do it on your own life. You don't own your life. Because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more 
then this these come of, of evil. Yeah, you can't swear on your own head. You know, people think that, you know, wow, that's me. I, I can do whatever I want. It's not, no, you belong to the most high. You can't even swear on you. The most high only one that can, that can make a decision based off of you on what he want to do. You can go right now and try to kill yourself and it won't work. God don't want you to die. You ain't going to die. You can go put a noose around your neck, try to jump off of a, a, the roof and a, the noose of a pot because he wasn't ready for you to die. You don't, you're, you're not going to die if he don't want you to. You can't swear on your, you can't turn your hair black, can't turn your hair gray. James 3, verse 6 to 8. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and set up on fire the course of nature. And, and it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of the birds and the of serpents and of things of the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. So it's telling you that, that people tame animals all the time. Your dog tells the city, sit, lay, lay. But that tongue, man can't seem to tame that. They just say whatever out of their mouth they want to. They can't, they can't control it. You can control uh, animals. You can make a dolphin jump up and catch a ball and do all this stuff, but you can't rattle your own tongue. And it says the tongue is, is, is a fire. What does the fire do? Burn up stuff. Cause destruction. That's why you got the bridle. Them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Now this is uh, referring to Israel. I don't want nobody to think that it's saying the other nations. Because people would try to use that to say, see, you're not supposed, you're supposed to be blessing other nations. You know what I'm saying? No. It's talking about your fellow Israelites. Bless them that persecute you. Because that's your brother. Now, you got David and all, and they tell you, hey, happy will I be when I when I take the other nation's kids and, and hit, hit their heads on the stone and crush the skulls. That was for the other nations. So you got to know the difference and don't think because they'll try to use that. To, oh, don't be don't be uh, causing speaking destruction to the nations. Yeah, it's OK to speak destruction to the nations, not to your own people. Okay. Proverbs 4.24, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. That's self-explanatory. First Peter 3 and 10, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile, that they speak no evil. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's your heart. That ye may prove what is that, prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are oh, you supposed to conform your mind, your heart to God's laws? And know how to treat people and what and how to brighten their tongue. Leviticus 20, verse 9. For everyone that curses his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. He hath cursed his father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. So you're not supposed to curse your mother and your father. Cursing, you know, really is talking about like saying, you know, putting them to death. Not as much in curse words, profanity, but it's talking about wishing they die and all this kind of stuff. But also profanity is not supposed to be done at all either. But this is more or less talking about the like person. Matthew 15, verse 18. But those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come forth from the heart. See, that which proceedeth out of your mouth comes from your heart, your mind. And they defile the man. So you're defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. All these sins proceed out of a person's mouth, out of their mind first. Before you do anything, you think about it. Then you speak. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mind are the issue of life. Deuteronomy 5, verse 11. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain. Second Timothy 2, verse 16. 
but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. See, it's telling you, shun profan profane. What was where do you get profanity from? The word profane. Shun profanity and vain babbling. Because the only thing it's going to do is increase God ungodliness. All that cursing and stuff, all it's going to do is increase ungodliness with it. It's going to get you in the flesh. Hey, da 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 da, you mother, da 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 da. It's going to cause you more and more to get in the flesh. Next thing you know, you fight. The more you get excited, the more you get in the flesh, the more evil starts. Any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things. So those, this is what you're supposed to think about, those things that are virtuous and pure. And if you think about those things, you're not thinking about cursing. You're not going to be thinking about, oh, I love God, and then thinking of a curse word at the same time. It doesn't work like that. You got to leave one to be able to get the other. You got to, to get in the flesh, you got to leave God behind so if you keep your mind on virtue, love, and dealing with your people right, you're not going to be thinking about cursing people out and hurting your brother and shooting your brother and, and, and messing with your brother's wife and all this kind of stuff. You're not going to think about those things. Matthew 15, verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murder. We already read that. No, that's that's no, we didn't read this, but it's pretty much saying the same thing Philippians is saying. James 3, verse 9 through 11. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made of the similitude of God, out of the same mouth. Proceed to blessing and cursing, my brother, these things ought not be. We've, we've said that, but let's see, if you notice throughout the scriptures, and I got uh, over 100 more that I could, I could go through. There's a lot of verses talking about how you got to watch what you say. That's just a few. I got pages of them. You use profanity or the curse and stuff. They're wicked. They want to keep that, that, that fleshly mentality while they're in Israel. Why we are not able as much to get people with higher stature. Not that they're better than you because they're not better but because they have to build Israel, one thing that's required is money. So it's nice having people with money to help build Israel. How can you build a school if you don't have any money to build a school to help out Israelites? How can you build an Israelite school? How can you build, do movies? How can you do things to help out Israel if no one has any money? So it's nice having a doctor that wait, that make two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year, or a basketball player that make fifty million dollars, or this or that. There's no problem. But the problem is a lot of those people are educated. They went to college. They went to schools. They were taught proper way to deal with people in a job environment. They go online. They look up stuff, and then they hear some camp calling people bees and saying all this stuff and you MF her and, and cussing out people. And then they say, oh, no, I can't be associated with this. So now you messed up a possible soul that you could have could have had with you, all because of your cursing and your vulgar, vulgar language. We have to get out of that. You, are, you should be able to communicate without profanity. We should all be able to communicate without that. And that's one thing that keeps a lot of us from being able to get successful people part of our organization. You don't want just drug, ex-drug dealers, ex this and that, that all bad things. You want some professionals too. Some professional Israelites, some lawyers, some doctors, some engineers, some teachers, some college professors who can teach your kids. People making a decent income that can pour in money to help build the nation. Not everybody, you don't want everybody is, is living or trying to, or living in a, um, a home or something like that. But they're broke. You want some people with money because it need, it's needed to be able to build. There's a lot of things that Israel need to do, but we can't do it because we don't have the funds to be able to do it. 
So be careful how you're speaking to people and how you're dealing with it because you give everyone a bad name when you use a profanity. Every group out there that do that type of acting, and they're doing it mainly because they want people to watch their YouTube. They want to watch it, so they put they able to put a title on there. Uh, uh, I fought a Edomite, or I did this, or this fight, or something like that, or, or this woman they call the B word to, and all this, and that way people people want to watch. It. That's not the way Christ acted. That's not the way the Israelites acted. That's not the way the disciples act. But we, so we are supposed to be as they are. And without that, with that, I say shalom.